There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. On that second, I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. On that third. O precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I am entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. You may be seated. We're going to keep moving here. If you need a prayer sheet, raise your hand. I've got a few to give you. Brother Richard has them. Anybody else? All right. Remember our ministries on the front there. Um, also pray for Pastor. Tonight's the last night. In fact, he's probably up preaching pretty soon here. Uh, their services start at 6.30, so we all pray for him. Uh, pray for him as he travels back tonight also. So he should be in. He said he'll be in about 10, 10.30, 11. Um, so we all pray for him. And then uh, continue to pray for Miss uh, Renee Stiff. And they travel over from uh, Hampton. And she had surgery last week. And... Right now, I heard everything went well. Uh, she's just in some pain, so y'all continue to pray for her recovery. And then, um, let's see, y'all pray for my sister Jennifer. She's having some heart issues and some other stuff, so pray for her. Pray for uh, Debbie Clifton. She is Miss Virginia Williams' daughter, and uh, she fell, and she has a, bur a bulging disc. Uh, so y'all pray for her. And then um, I've got uh, Megan Burke. Yes, okay. And she fractured, she has a fractured leg, and that's Miss Peggy's great niece. And then pray for Bill Griffin, and he's in the nursing home. And then Ann Goss, she's, that's his sister, also in the nursing home. Okay? And then anyone with one tonight? Yes, ma'am. All right, Leslie Darden. Okay, anyone else? Anyone with the um, unspoken? All right. All right, let's see. All right, remember our, mini our missionaries on the back, and then uh, I think that's it. I think we're just going to keep moving, and uh, we'll, we'll pray, and then... Uh, We'll take the offering, all right? Father, we just thank you for this day, and uh, Lord, we thank you for a time where we can get together uh, midweek and uh, pray for our friends and our family, Lord, that need it. And uh, Lord, we pray for pray for my sister, Lord, just help her with her health and be with Pastor. Give him power tonight as he preaches, and uh, Lord, just uh, be with him as he travels home tonight. Give him safety. Uh, keep the critters off the road for him, and uh, uh, Lord, we love you. We, we, we just thank you for seeing, uh, seeing our needs and providing for us, Lord. And, uh, Lord, we just thank you for your grace and 
and your long suffering with us when we can be just um, just dumb, Lord. And uh, Lord, we just we just thank you for being patient with us. And uh, Lord, we ask that you meet with us tonight. Be with Leslie Darden, Lord. Just uh, encourage her, encourage her family, Lord, and uh, just uh, just help us to be encouragement to her also, Lord. And uh, uh, Lord, we we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's stand. Let's have the offering. That's right. Let's stand. Stretch one more time. Then we're going to sit for a minute. So we'll pass through the offering here. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Well, they're passing through. Remember, um, there is... Tristan's birthday? Oh, Tristan's birthday today. Oh, that's why she's peddling cupcakes back there. Okay, gotcha. It's Tristan's birthday. All right, Tristan, raise your hand. All right. We're going to sing happy birthday, Tristan. Yes, yes, Crystal, I need, I need a note. Uh, happy birthday, Tristan. If we're going to skip anybody, uh, we'll catch you Sunday. How about that? All right. She hit our notes. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tristan. Happy birthday to you. The second verse. Happy birthday to you. Only one will not do. Born again means salvation. How many have you? Amen. All right. So let's, uh, let's get to Peyton up here. He's going to bless the offering. And we're going to keep moving. Yes, sir. Let's pray. Lord, thank this day, Lord. And I pray that you'd um, bless the gift and the giver, Lord, as we take the offering, Lord. And please be with the uh, uh, Kendrick family, Lord, as they sing, Lord. And uh, please uh, strengthen their voices, Lord. And uh, please keep us safe as we um, travel home, Lord. Please be with the pastor as he's traveling, traveling Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, we got one more time, the Kendrick family, and they're going to sing, and then he's going to come preach, and he's got till midnight, so now come on.
That's a blessing, ain't it? Amen. I love it. Never get tired of it. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to be here on Wednesday night. We've enjoyed being with y'all. I know you'll be glad your preacher's coming back. I wish I, wish I could see him, too. Amen. I, I like Brother Weedo. He's a blessing. And, uh, and uh, he's got a good church here, some good people. And I appreciate the great privilege to get to come and be in his place for Sunday and today, and uh, I'm glad the kids got to be here. Sometimes their kids are with me and sometimes they're not, and uh, there used to be a day when they always were with me. I was hardly ever, never anywhere without them, and it's getting a few places here and there that they're maybe not going. They're getting older. I don't like it. There ain't nothing I can do about it. That's just the way life goes. Amen. And so uh, Grace is on her little tour, I guess you can call it that. We don't call it tours, but she's probably on her little final deal this meeting. And she told me the other day she wanted to go to Pennsylvania with us. So that's Pennsylvania and Michigan. And then I don't know what's going to happen after that. Amen. I wish the Lord would come back. We wouldn't have to worry about it. Hallelujah. All right. I want you to turn to several scriptures tonight. And don't get nervous on the first one. It's just a springboard. Luke 16. Turn over to Luke chapter 16 tonight. And uh, we're going to read down there in verses 27. And then if you want to, 2 Peter 3 and Ezekiel 33. And I'll give them to you again. Luke chapter 16, 2 Peter 3 and Ezekiel 33. And uh, we'll read some scriptures here and try to preach to the church. I do want to say this, that uh, this is the real deal, church. I hope that you understand that. I know that it's so easy for us that are faithful to the house of God. It is so easy for us to just go through the motions, you know, live every day, do the things that we do, and, uh, oh, it's time to go to church, let's go to church, and then we leave church and we go right back to our normal things that we do, and you'll spend Thursday and Friday and Saturday, you know, enjoying life, hopefully, doing the things that you normally do, and then Sunday you'll come back to church, hey man, I hope you'll be here, I'm sure you will, worshiping the Lord. And uh, there's some that only come on Sunday morning, you won't see them again until Sunday morning, I'm not trying to be rude, that's just the way that uh, some people are, they, I don't know, maybe they don't need as much God as we do, but uh, uh, if you're not careful, you'll get in that rut to where life will pass by and uh, we won't do much for the Lord. And uh, I hope that uh, you don't get in that rut, and if you are, do your best to get out. It's very easy to get in that place to where uh, you just let life go by. And, uh, you know, you just come to church, you've got a good church, you've got a great preacher. I mean, I, I, I sure appreciate Brother Weedo. I mean, you, I, he ain't always going to be here. we love for him to always be here, you know, but you never know what's going to He might be here five years, ten years, twenty years, a year. Who knows? But... Uh, if the man of God was to leave or not be here or, or something happened, would you still be faithful to the God of heaven? 
I hope you would be, amen. We, we don't serve God, I'm just talking to you right now, we don't serve God uh, because of a man. Uh, I don't serve God because of my family. I don't serve God because of uh, preachers that I know that are friends of mine. I serve the Lord because I love Him, amen, and because of what He did for me and uh, how He changed my life. Well, let me say this to you. There's a whole bunch of people out there in this world that need a changed life. I mean, I've been thinking about it, and uh, there is a, a ton of people, 7 billion plus people on the planet. That's, that's hard to imagine, 7 billion plus people, 7.1, something like that, 7.2, I don't know. And they say approximately every, uh, every second, two people die. I, don't, I can't hardly imagine that. Now, I don't know how often a person's born... But undoubtedly, there's more being born than there is dying. Or if that was the case, we would be kind of like extinct. But there's a whole lot more people being born, and that's hard to understand, ain't it? That's about as simple as I know how to put it. But about every two people every second die. Where are they going? I just, I just want, I want you thinking tonight. Where are they going? I mean, I've been dwelling on this and... Looking at this and thinking about all these people, man, who's going to tell them about Jesus? They ain't going to just get saved riding past your church building. I mean, I'm not trying to be rude, just want you to think. They're not going to get saved just because you got a sign put up outside that says Bible Baptist Church. And they're not going to get saved by you just being nice and you know, looking good. Somebody's got to tell them. So I, I want to preach to you tonight on this, with you thinking on that. Luke 16, then 2 Peter 3, Ezekiel 33. Here's what the Bible said in verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, thou would ascend into my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Now I want to say this. There's, there's, there's a lot that could probably be said here if somebody really knew how to preach other than me. But it's obvious that this man is burdened for his family. It's obvious that he's burdened for his family. And listen to me, now don't dodge me. The reason he's burdened for his family is because he's in hell. He don't want them to come. And another reason he's burdened for his family is because he knows how bad it is. We really don't know how bad it is. I mean, if we could probably get maybe 30 seconds of hell, we'd, we'd be a different person. We'd have a burden for the lost. The Bible said in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it said this. It said, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us who are not willing. Here, watch what it says. Not willing <coughs> that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, who is that any? That's anybody. Amen. And who is that all? That's everybody. I mean, I say to you, dear friend, regardless of how we feel or what we think, the Bible said that uh, he's long-suffering to us, and God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You say, well, I don't like him. Well, God loves him. Bible said in Ezekiel 33, 11, it said, Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure. Here's what God said. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die? Now, I say to you, dear friend, these verses tonight remind us of the call of God throughout the Bible for sinners to come to Christ and repent of their sins and According to the Bible, he pleads, he calls, he warns, he invites every person on the face of the earth, every person on the face of the earth to come to Christ before he's eternally too late and be saved from their sin debt. It has always been God that sought after sinners. From the very first sinner, Adam and Eve, we find in the Bible that God came looking for Adam. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 9, it said, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? 
Now, this is after Adam's sin. This is after that Adam and Eve have sinned against God. We find God is looking for Adam. That is God looking for him. And then in Luke chapter number 19, verse 10, we're going to jump way out into the future. The Bible said, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. That is God looking for mankind. You understand, dear friend, that God in the very beginning came looking for Adam there in the very beginning. And then because he sinned and he needed a savior, amen, he needed forgiveness. And then we find way over there, dear friend, later on in Luke, that the Lord Jesus Christ has come to seek and to save those that are lost. That's us. That's the world. That's those, dear friend, that have been uh, pretty much uh, upon the face of the earth uh, and have uh, got sin in their life. So that's everybody. And many people think this. They think, well, how could God send a good person to hell? I mean, you've heard it before, have you not? They'll say something like this. He's a loving God. God would never do that. How could God ever send a good person to hell? Well, the Bible said there's none good. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. So no matter how good we think they are, in God's eyes, they're not good. The Bible said in Romans 3.10, also it said this, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. So dear friend, I say this to you tonight. Uh, if anybody goes to hell, it's not God's fault. Amen. That's right. Because God has done everything he can do to stop people from hell. Matter of fact, he sent his son to die on the cross, take our hell, and he raised him and raised and he raised himself from the dead. He sent the Holy Ghost to woo us and to draw us to Christ. He has given us a Bible, amen, to instruct us and teach us how to be saved. And I say to you, dear friend, the Bible even teaches us that you can look at a, a, a creation. You can look at what God's done and know that there's a God. Amen. And may I say to you, dear friend, uh, that it's not God's fault if anybody goes to hell. It's their own fault. If they will not heed to the loving call of God, there's nothing else that God can do. I mean, the world knows, uh, most of the world, maybe not all of them, but the world knows that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, and I say to you, dear friend, uh, that God has done everything he can do uh, to make a way possible, dear friend, for people to be saved. But God uses man to tell man. Are you telling? Are you a witness? The Bible said Psalm 124 verse 4, Refuge failed me, no man cared for my soul. I hope the people in this community don't feel that way. I hope that people that you know does not feel that way. Friend, I, I, I know I'm not the greatest soul in the world, but I do my best. I probably could do better. I pass out tracks. I try to tell people about Jesus. I try to witness to people. I try to carry tracks in my vehicle. I usually have them in my pocket when I leave my vehicle most of the time. But I say to you, dear friend, no matter how hard I try, I, that's not enough. No matter how hard you try, that's not enough. Because there's plenty of people today that's not doing anything about it. We got our churches today that are full of of people, dear friend, uh, that don't care if people go to hell or not. So I'm preaching you tonight on this subject. Who cares if they go to hell? Who cares if they go to hell? Well, let me say this to you, number one. God the Father cares if they go to hell or not. We live in a world today of disconcern for the souls of men. The attitude of most people is, well, who cares? I ain't worried about them. If they go to hell, that drunkard, that adulterer, that sodomite, that terrorist, that wicked person, that woman, that man, that guy, that girl, whoever it is, they deserve to go to hell. As a matter of fact, some people even tell them to go there. And I say to you, dear friend, uh, the Bible said in 2 Peter 3, 9, it said, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There's a crowd out there that believes some are going to hell and some are not. And there's nothing they can do about it. And I say, God help their ignorant spirit to, to think that they are wiser than God. My Lord said in his Bible that he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Bible said in Ezekiel 33, 10, here's what God said. Hey, he said, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. There's people, dear friend, we've all been guilty of it probably, that something happened to some wicked individual. We say, that's what they deserve. They get it. They can rot in hell. That's not the whole Heart of God. God said, I have no pleasure 
in the death of the wicked. If God did not care, then he would not have went looking for Adam when he had sinned. Yet we find God crying out, Adam, Adam, where art thou? Of course God knew where Adam was at. But he wanted Adam to know that he was seeking him. God cared so much about Adam and Eve that he made a way for them to be forgiven that very moment. When God killed that little lamb with his bare hands and shed the blood of that lamb and made them coats. And then he made a way for the whole entire world to be forgiven of their sins. So that they do not have to die and go to hell. And another lamb's blood was shed. Amen. Uh, and I say to you, dear friend, that God the Father cares if they go to hell or not. Listen to what God said. God said this. He said in Romans 10, 21, all day long, I, stre- I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Isaiah 45, 22, he said this. Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. Isaiah 55, 7 said, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. That comes from God. Amen. And may I say to you tonight, dear friend, that God calls and he cries and he pleads and he woos. He seeks and he shows goodness and he draws and he loves and he's done what he can do to call a world to his son and here's why because he is not willing that anybody perish and die and go to a devil's hell the Bible said who will have all men to be saved and to come to, uh, unto the knowledge of the truth there is not one person on this earth that God does not want to be saved That's right. not one His will is that all come to the knowledge of truth of trust Christ as their Savior. But the problem is many have rejected his will. So I say to you, dear friend, we may sit in our churches. We may enjoy our homes. We may enjoy our families. And we may not care if anybody dies and goes to hell or not. But I say to you, God cares. Let me give you a second one. The Lord Jesus Christ cares. Listen to the words of Jesus. Here's what he said in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. And there's a lot of people out there in this world that are heavy laden with sin. Their lives are being destroyed. The Bible said in John 6, 37, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. There ain't nobody he'll say no to. The Bible said in John 4, 14, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up in everlasting life. He said in Isaiah 55, 1, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye by and eat. Yea, come by wine and milk without money, without price. So the Lord Jesus Christ sends out a call for anybody and all that will come can come to the water of life freely without money, without price, regardless of who you are. He said, I will no wise cast you out. He calls for the one that is laden heavy with sin, those that are guilty of the vilest of sins. And he says, I will give you rest. These are not the words of somebody that wants a person to go to hell. Instead, these are the words, church, of our lovely Lord Jesus Christ that calls out to a world to come to him. The words that that he spoke and the things that he did when he was on this earth is because he cared for sinners. That's right. When he healed that blind man, it was because he cared for sinners. When he healed the lame man, it was because he cared for sinners. When he healed the impotent man and when he helped the maniac and demonic man and when he sat on oil hungry and tired to help a woman instead of eating, it was because he cared for sinners. When he forgave an adulterer instead of stoning her, it was because he cared for sinners. When he broke up a funeral and raised the dead, it was because he cared for sinners. When he leapt at, wept at Lazarus' tombs, tomb, I'm sorry, and when, he, and when he wept over Jerusalem, it was because he cared for sinners. When he was mocked and beat on and spit on and his beard plucked out and beat with a whip had a crown of thorns uh, uh, beat upon his head and he was crucified and he was pierced for you and I and it took our hell for three days and three nights Uh, it was because he cared uh, for sinners the Bible said he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man. The Bible said he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Why? sinners he did all that for sinners can I say to you tonight dear friend he did not do that just for you he did not do that for you to just sit and enjoy your life and enjoy church and not tell the rest of the world that's going to hell he did that for the world 
And he saved you so that you tell somebody. I don't know the people you know. You don't know the people I know. I don't, I don't pass by the people you pass by. You don't pass by the ones I pass by. I don't have the friends you have. You don't have the friends I have. Who's going to tell them? It's your responsibility. The Bible said in Luke 23, 34, as he was being mocked and hanging on the cross in agony, he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not why, what they do. Why did he do that? For sinners. He cared so much for sinners, he forgot about his suffering, his pain, his agony, and he answered the heartbroken cry of a sinner to save his soul, and he told him, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. I say, why? Why did he do that? Because he cared for sinners. That's why. So I say to you, dear friend, if anybody goes to hell, they'll go, over, they'll, they'll go to hell over the greatest care and the greatest love that has ever been known to the world. And that is the love and care that the Lord Jesus Christ has shown to all that has ever taken breath. Who cares if they go to hell? Well, God does. Jesus does. You know, I've often thought, Lord, why don't you just come back? I mean, you don't come back, that's more people that's going to be born on this earth, that's more people that's going to die to go to hell. But that's not the way he's thinking. That's not the way it's supposed to be. That's right. The way it's supposed to be is more people that are birthed, more people get saved. But the reason it's not that way is because God's church is failing. That's right. I don't mean to be rough or hard. Who's going to tell them? You know what? Here's what I pray. Lord, I'm having a hard time winning my family, but I'm out winning other people's family. Maybe you'll send somebody to win my family. Whose family member are you trying to win? Well, God cares. Jesus cares. What about the Holy Ghost? He cares. There's another call that we hear from the Word of God. That is the call from the Holy Ghost. Bob said over there in Revelation 22, 17, The Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that hears say, Come. Let him that is the thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. So right before the close of the last book of the Bible, the Spirit of God makes one more call to all those that would like to come. And he said, The Spirit and bride say, Come. So the Spirit of God has been assigned to us as our comforter. Amen. And he is calling all that will come to come. And when the Lord calls his bride out, the Holy Spirit, amen, uh, uh, calls his bride out. May I say to you, dear friend, it's going to be all over. And, and before that happens, this Bible says the Spirit and the bride say come. In John 16, 7 and 8, nevertheless, I'll tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. He said, for if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, here's what it says. It says, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. You know what he did when he spoke to you? Are you listening? Are you, here's what he did. He reproved you. He reproved you of, of sin. And, and he said, you're a sinner and you need righteousness. And if you don't get it, you're going to get judged. That's reproof of sin and righteousness and judgment. And that's exactly what he does. That's what he did when he spoke to your heart for your need for salvation. Amen? And that's what he did when he spoke to my heart for my need for salvation. And I say to you, dear friend, that the Spirit of God that lives within you is called the Holy Ghost of God. And the Holy Ghost of God works through a vessel to tell somebody else about Jesus. Bible said in John 16, 7 and 8, Nevertheless, I'll tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away. And he said this, I'm going to go away. But when I go away, I'm going to put the Holy Ghost in you. Amen. And he's going to work through you. So because of the mercy of God, he sent the Holy Ghost into this world. And the primary reason is to comfort the saints and convict the world of sin and call sinners to repentance. So there's no doubt, dear church family, that the Holy Ghost cares. He's the one that's calling. He's the one convicting. He's the one wooing. He's the one that's knocking on the heart's door. He's the one that's pleading their Friend. And if there is a way that he can approach a heart, he'll do it. Why? Why? Because he cares. That's right. You know why the Holy Ghost dealt with you about your need for salvation? Because he cared. Amen. 
Ain't it a blessing? Yes. Isn't it a blessing to know you're saved? Amen. Man, ain't that good? Your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. What a blessing, man, to know that the Holy Ghost of God cared enough to come and talk to you of all the people in the world, seven billion people, and he talked to you Amen. and told you you needed to get saved. And you got saved. What about everybody else? Right. I would venture to say that God used a vessel to speak to you, whether it be preaching or somebody giving you a track or somebody telling you about Jesus or a family member talking to you about the Lord. He used a vessel. Are you being used? There might be someone here tonight, I don't know, that's lost. I don't know everybody here. And you may wonder why you have that feeling of something hammering at your heart. You wake up in the middle of the night like someone's calling you and I don't know, you're not sure. Or something, uh, uh, you've never been saved, you've never been under conviction. You've never uh, really trusted Christ as your Savior. But now He's convicting you. And you know he's calling you. You say, what is it? I'll tell you what it is. It's the Holy Ghost of God wooing you. Who cares if they go to hell, church? God cares. Jesus cares. Holy Ghost cares. Let me give you this one. Those in heaven care. Hey, we know those in hell care, don't we? We read it already, Luke 16. We know those in hell care. But you know those in heaven care too? Let me give you just some Bible. The Bible says in Luke 15, 10, likewise I say unto you, it says this, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Now, there's some uh, people could probably argue with me on this if they wanted to, but I believe the ones that are doing the rejoicing here are the redeemed of God. I mean, the angels even desire to look into the things that we enjoy, amen? And they don't, under, they, they don't get it. But those that have gone on before us, those that have walked the path that we are walking, those that know about our trials and our temptations and all that, all that we go through, uh, they are the ones that are in the presence of the angels and they are the ones doing the rejoicing. And yes, they care if somebody goes to hell or not. And some may wonder if they can really see what's going on down here. But I'm reminded in 12, Hebrews 12.1, 12, we don't have to turn there for time, but I'll read it to you. People wonder if they can see what's going on. Well, Hebrews 12.1 says this, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Here's what he says. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And then listen to this. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So that's in Hebrews 12. Really, That's verse 1. You go back to Hebrews 11. And Paul just got done speaking about the heroes of faith. And he says in chapter number 12, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. That's the, talking about those heroes of faith. Amen? That's talking about the people that have gone on before us. That's the moms and the dads and the sisters and the brothers and the aunts and the uncles and the grandmas and the grandpas and the friends uh, and the preachers of the past. Uh, uh, they're in that great cloud of witnesses. Uh, and the Bible says that we are compassed about with that great cloud. Uh, and that word compassed, it means this. It means completely surrounded. Now understand, the idea here is, a, is the Roman arena where the players are down on the ground in the center while those that are in the grandstand are cheering their team on. So in other words, dear friend, in that Roman arena, you know it, you've seen it. Uh, it, it was a great grandstand and, and it went all the way around and everything was done down there in the center where everybody could watch. That's what Paul's saying. He said we are compassed about, just like that Roman arena, we are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses and he said we are in a race. So in other words, we're in the race still. Those that have gone on before us, they are done with their race. And I say to you, dear friend, we are on the course that God has put us on and we are completely surrounded by those that used to be in this race and they are looking down upon us and they are cheering us on. You ever seen a race where there wasn't somebody cheering 
No, dear friend, uh, there up there, the Bible says uh, uh, that there's a great cloud of witnesses, uh, so let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, I want you to think about this. Think about all those heroes of faith, people like Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham, Sarah and Moses and Rahab and those that were martyred for Christ, those that were crucified and burned at the stake, those that were beheaded and those that were sawn asunder and stoned and tortured and tormented uh, for the cause of Christ. Uh, What about men like Peter and Paul and James and John and all the disciples and the apostles? Uh, men like Jeremiah and Elijah and Elisha and Ezekiel and Daniel and a host of others uh, and some of the great women dear friend of God that have gone on and your family members uh, what about preachers of the past that you and I have known uh, or even like I said family members a mom a dad a sister a brother whoever it is uh, may I say to you dear friend those that are saved uh, they are in this great cloud of witnesses uh, they are the ones that are compassing us about and I say to you they care And they are cheering us on. The Bible says there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. So I believe with all my heart there is some joy and rejoicing and happiness and shouting and cheering over one sinner that repenteth. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about someone in heaven seeing you get close to their family member or their loved one or somebody that they want to see saved. And they're hoping that you're going to tell them. If that's true that we're compassed about, if it's true that we're in a race, if it's true that maybe they can see stuff like that and they're cheering us on, maybe you work with them. Maybe you live on the same street with them. Maybe you're part of the same family as them. Maybe you pass them in a store. Maybe they're on the other side of the gas pump at the gas station. I don't know. But can you imagine somebody on the other side is cheering you on? Tell them about Jesus. Give them that track. Talk to them about the Lord. Try to get them saved. Come on. Come on. Just like somebody would say in a race, come on, run. Come on, you can do it. And in heaven they're going, tell them about the Lord. Come on. And how many times have we ignored the Holy Ghost of God as he's dealt with our heart to tell somebody about Jesus? Joe Henry Hankins told the story about a man that needed help during the Depression. Dr. Hankins, the great preacher, said this man came to his office and asked for money. Brother Hankins said that he believed the guy was genuine, so he gave him what he needed. The man turned to walk away, and the preacher said, I'm doing for this for you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, my Lord. The man stopped, turned around, said, nobody's ever said that to me. He began to cry as he told the story of his mother that had died five years prior to this story. Her last words were, Jack, promise me that you will meet me in heaven. He looked at the great preacher, Brother Hankins, and he said this. He said, preacher, I'm doing everything I know to do to get saved. He said, I don't think I can be saved. The preacher got his Bible out. He said, come here, son, sit down. Let's get your mother's prayers answered. He opened that Bible up and he showed him how to be saved. The man trusted Christ as his Savior that very day. Now, here's what I want you to ask yourself. What do you think that mother was doing? The Bible says there's joy in the presence of the angels of God. What do you think she was doing? i tell you what I believe. I believe that somehow, some way, the God of heaven allowed that mama to see that boy walk in that preacher's office that day, amen, and probably saw what was going on and seen her boy maybe start to turn and walk away when the preacher, she's probably saying, no, tell my boy about Jesus. Come on, preacher, tell him about the Lord. Tell him about Jesus. And I would see that boy as he turns around and talks to that man and she sees him as a open that Bible up and her boy sit down there and that man of God takes the Bible and shows that boy how to get saved. i tell you what mama was doing. Amen. She was running all over the streets of glory shouting, my boy just got saved. My boy just got saved. Who cares if they go to hell? Those in heaven care. Amen. 
I'll give you this last one. God cares, Jesus cares, Holy Ghost cares, those in heaven care. We better care. You know, that's a pretty good crowd. God the Father, God the Son, God the, and God the Holy Ghost, and those in heaven, that's a pretty good crowd. If they care, don't you think you should care? Here's what the Bible said, Ezekiel 33, 8, grace you can come. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. Listen, listen, listen. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, the, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Are y'all hearing me? Are you hearing me? He said, his blood will I require at thine hand. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know how that's going to work. I, I, I don't know if their blood will appear on your hands at judgment day. I don't know if you'll have to lay your hands on them as they're cast into hell. I have no idea. Are you listening? That ain't a good day. That's not a good day. I wish you could get it in your heart. That's a, that's a lot of moaning, a lot of screaming, a lot of hollering, a lot of crying, a lot of agony. Tears aren't wiped away until after this. That's a bad day. The Bible said, their blood will I require at thine hand. He said, Acts 20, verse 26, wherefore I take you to record this day. Here's what Paul said. He said, I'm pure from the blood of all men. How do you, how do, you do that? How do you get pure from the blood of all men. Here's how you do it. Are you listening teenagers, mom and daddy? Here's how you do it. He told everybody he could about Jesus. He told everybody he could. Paul's saying, I've done everything I can to keep sinners out of hell. And here's a question I got for the church. Are you? Are we? Dear friend, we better care. The Bible said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Do everything you can. Tell them about Jesus. I ask you, dear friend, are you one of those that don't care if they go to hell or not? If I didn't have a burden for sinners... I'd get on my face every day and I'd say, God, break my heart for him. God help us, church. Somebody better care. Let's all stand. Father, we love you. Lord, I pray you'd burden the heart of God's people for those that are lost. Burden my heart, Lord. Take the old hard, strong roughness and break it for souls. How I do pray that, Lord Jesus, you please would send revival throughout your church. A revival for souls. Lord, I pray that, God, you please would help us to be a clean people that wins other people to Christ. Holy Ghost, would you touch the heart of your people, we pray. In Jesus' name, God spoke to your heart tonight. Why don't you come find a place at this altar? And why don't you ask God to touch your heart, break your heart for sinners, and put somebody on your heart maybe to help you win. Would you come? You know, you got a burden for souls? That bus ministry will grow. You got a burden for souls? That Sunday school class will grow. You got a burden for, this, for souls? This church will grow. You know why? Because you're telling them about Jesus. You're winning them. You're bringing them. I said in the beginning of the message. Are you listening? I said in the beginning of the message that we go through life every day. And we get in a rut. We go to a good church. And I'm afraid that some of you are going to stay that way. You have no burden for the lost. God help you. Are you saved?
Dear friend, hell's real. It's an awful place. Are you saved? you don't tell them church the next church down the street ain't going to tell them so God's got you here for this place I want to say something, one more thing and I'll be done Grace play softly let's just say the church let's say the church runs 100 people no, I'm going to say, uh, yeah, let's just say 100. I know you had more here Sunday morning, but pretty much this is the crowd that's going to do anything. So let's say the church runs 50 people. If 50 people would win one soul this year and get them in church, church is running 100 now think about this in 2023 that's coming up next year if 100 people would win one soul and get them in this church one go after one and get them saved get them baptized get them in this church discipled growing one person if 100 people win one person, you're running 200 at the end of next year. If 200 people will win one person in 2024, at the end of that year, you would be running 400. The only reason a church does not grow is because a church does not win them. We got to get a burden for the lost church. We got to. The ecumenical crowd's not going to win them. The non denominational crowd's not going to win them. Catholic church ain't going to win them. Methodist church ain't going to win them. You understand? I'm not trying to knock everybody, but they're not going to win them. We have the truth. Somebody's got to tell them. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Lee. Remember there's a offering plate in the back, love offering. Remember that's just icing on the cake, right? Y'all know that one. Uh, be in your place for Sunday, uh, Mother's Day. Uh, I know pastor said they have a gift for every mother, every lady. So be in your place for that. I see Miss Deanna's mom in town. So me, mom's here. Y'all give her a hug and uh, tell her she, we're glad she came to bother pastor about that. All right. Uh, he'll love that. All right. Um, anything else? Anybody? Nope. Nope. We're good. All right. Uh, they will need help. So some of you weak-minded guys, help them, please. Uh, don't touch anything till they tell you to touch them. Okay. Uh, you can't replace it. Amen. Um, and then we'll be done. Let's get Brother Bojack close us in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the preaching of your word, Lord. Thank you for your word that's written for us to be able to read it and understand it, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would just break our heart as a church for our, our city, for our state, and for our country, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would just, just let us never forget what we heard tonight, Lord. And I pray that you would just help it to be on our minds all the time, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would just help us remember. Lord, thank you for... Everything that you've done for us, that you've allowed us to do, Lord, thank you for everything you're going to do. Lord, I pray that you would dismiss us and give us safe travels. In your name I pray, amen.